Hi folks! Today we're going to read a book called Almost Gone. Take a look at this beautiful butterfly. This is the Miami Blue Butterfly. These pretty little butterflies live only in the Florida Keys. They are almost gone. What do you think of that? Actually, there are quite a few animals that are almost gone. Today I'm going to read Almost Gone, the World's Rarest Animals. It's written and illustrated by Steve Jenkins. If something is rare, only a few examples of it exist. Let's find out why these animals are almost gone. Crested shell duck, China, fewer than a hundred left. The crested shell duck was once found throughout much of East Asia. It has been hunted for food and for its beautiful feathers until it has become one of the most endangered birds in the world. Here's an asterisk that says about the number of animals left. See the asterisks right there? Animals in the wild are hard to count accurately. The numbers given for each animal in this book are the best guess of the scientists who study them. These numbers don't include animals living in zoos, just those left in their natural habitats. As people become concerned and take action, many of these animals will increase. Others, however, will go down, since it's too late to help all of these animals recover. This is an introduction to help us understand the main topics of the book. Animals that are almost gone or endangered. Let's see what information the author shares about these animals. There is a bird perched outside your window. A small bird with a black head, a white throat, and a gray body. It is a chickadee. Suppose this bird and all other chickadees in the world died out, became extinct. Would it matter? Well, you'd never again see a chickadee sitting outside your window or flying or feeding its young or building a nest. You'd never again hear a chickadee chirping, and that would be sad. But there is much more to it than that. Chickadees eat insects. Without chickadees, there would be more insects. Some of these insects would attack the plants in your garden. Others, such as mosquitoes, carry disease that might make you sick. Chickadees also eat fruit and berries. Their droppings spread and fertilize the seeds. Hawks eat chickadees. Without chickadees, the hawks might not have enough food to eat and would starve or go someplace else. Hawks also, also eat rats and mice. Without hawks, there would be more rats and mice. Each chickadee carries thousands, even millions of tiny mites, lice, and bacteria on its feathers and inside its body. Many of these creatures can live nowhere else. Without chickadees, they would die. Every living thing is connected to many other living things, often in ways we don't understand or even suspect. And once an animal or a plant is gone, it can never come back. All the living things that interact with it will never be the same. Some of them won't be able to survive themselves. Chickadees, as it turns out, are not in great danger, but many other animals are. All over the world, people are building roads and cities, turning open lands into farm and ranches, and polluting the air and water. This has put millions of animals at risk. Some are critically endangered and may soon become extinct. Some can be saved if we act quickly to help them. For others, it is already too late. Here are a few things. Here are a few of these animals. Animals that are almost gone. The Grand Cayman Blue Iguana. The Grand Cayman 
island, the Caribbean. Fewer than 25 left. So I want you to notice something about this heading and the subheading. The heading is in all capital letters. Grand Cayman, Blue Iguana. And the subheading shows the place and the number left. And it'll be that way with all of the different animals we look at. The iguana is found on just one island in the Caribbean. The blue iguana is three to four feet in length, weighs 15 to 20 pounds, and can live to be 50 years old. Its body turns bright turquoise during mating season. Blue iguanas eat fruit, flowers, and leaves. They have been hunted by people for food, run over by cars, and had their nests destroyed by wild dogs. Here's the northern hairy-nosed wombat. Australia, fewer than 60 left. The northern hairy-nosed wombat got its name from the short bristly hairs that grow on its face. It is a stocky, powerful animal, about three feet long. It uses its strong front claws for digging, burrows, and finding the roots it eats. Sheep and cattle ranching have destroyed most of this wombat's territory. It is now found only in a tiny corner of one national park in Australia. The California condor. Southwestern United States, fewer than 200 left. These enormous birds with wingspans of more than nine feet can soar for hours without flapping their wings. Condors are scavengers. They eat dead animals that they spot from the air. By 1982, hunting, loss of habitat, pesticide poisoning, and collisions with power lines had left fewer than 25 California condors living in the wild. Since then, raising birds in captivity and releasing them into the wild is slowly helping to increase their numbers. Adex, Sahara Desert, Africa. Fewer than 400 left. The Adex is a large antelope weighing up to 300 pounds. It lives in the hot, dry deserts of northern Africa and may go most of its life without drinking, getting the water it needs from the sparse grass and bushes it, e it eats. The Adex is hunted for its meat and leather, and during the past hundred years, its numbers have declined sharply. Yangtze River Dolphin, or Baiji, China, fewer than 20 left. These freshwater dolphins live in small groups along the length of the Yangtze River. They have to grow to be, they may grow to be eight feet long and weigh up to 500 pounds. The Baiji appear in many Chinese myths and folktales. Pollution, collisions with ships, ship's propellers and construction on the river have greatly endangered these creatures. There were approximately 6,000 Baji in the 1950s, a few hundred in the 1980s, and fewer than two dozen in 2000. Assam rabbit or hispid hare India and Nepal, fewer than 110 left. This gentle, slow-moving rabbit is also known as a his hispid hare. It is about one and a half feet long and weighs four or five pounds. Assam rabbits live in tall grass in the foothills of the Himalaya mountains. They eat the roots and sh young shoots of this grass the destruction of this habitat to create farmland has made the Assam rabbit extremely rare. The Miami blue butterfly, Florida, United States, fewer than 50 left. For 50 years, no one saw a Miami blue butterfly. Then, in 2000, 
a colony of these tiny bright blue butterflies was found on the island in the Florida Keys. In many places, development has destroyed this butterfly's habitat and the plants it, its caterpillars eat. Butterfly collectors and pesticides used to control mosquitoes also threaten the Miami blue butterfly. Javan rhinoceros, Vietnam and Indonesia, fewer than 60 left. Although the Javan rhinoceros once lived throughout Southeast Asia, it is now found in just two national parks in Vietnam and in Indonesia. These rhinos live in dense, low-lying tropical forests and much of their jungle habitat has been cleared by farming or logging. Their numbers have also been seriously reduced by poaching or illegal hunting. The hunters are after the rhino's horn, which is in great demand in traditional Asian medicine. Unlike many critically endangered animals, there are no Javan rhinoceroses in captivity. The golden lion tamarin, Brazil, a few hundred left. This squirrel-sized monkey lives in the tropical forests on the coast of Brazil. It is an omnivorous. It is omnivorous. It is omnivorous. It will eat almost anything, including fruit, insects, frogs, lizards, and small birds, golden lions, Lion tamarins are preyed upon by eagles, snakes, and jaguars, but are endangered mostly because people have destroyed so much of their forest home. A program to breed golden lion tamarins in captivity has increased their numbers in recent years. The Eastern Barred Bandicoot, Australia, fewer than 300 left. The bandicoot is a marsupial any animal that carries its young in a pouch. The Eastern Barred Bandicoot is about the same size as a rabbit. It is found in one small part of Australia. A shy, solitary creature, the bandicoot sleeps in burrows during the day and comes out at night to search for grubs, worms, beetles, and berries. It uses its excellent sense of smell to find food and its pointed nose and strong claws to dig. The bandicoot is a fast runner and can jump three feet in one leap. Giant stick insect. Lord Howe Island, Australia. Fewer than 10 left. A rock rising from the sea near Lord Howe Island is the home of the world's rarest insect the six inch long giant stick insect. It was thought to be extinct since 1918 when a ship ran aground on Lord Howe Island and rats from the ship attacked the giant stick insects living there. Few survived, however, and in 2001, three of the insects were discovered on this rocky outcropping. Dwarf water buffalo or Tamara, the Philippines, fewer than 200 left. At 650 pounds, the dwarf water buffalo, also called the Tamara, is small for a buffalo. It lives in dense, wet forests on one island in the Philippines where it feeds on grass and water plants. Much of the forest land where this buffalo lives has been cleared, destroying its food source. Hunting has also helped reduce its numbers. Bactrian camel, Mongolia and China, fewer than 500 left. Bactrian camels are the two humped relatives of the more common one humped camel. They live in the harsh desert of Central Asia. Their humps contain stored fat and allow these camels to go for several days without food or water. Their long, shaggy coats keep them warm in the cold desert nights, and they are able to close their nostrils to keep out blowing sand. 
In many places, domesticated camels have crowded out their wild Bactrian cousins. Waterfall frog or torrent frog. Australia, unknown number left. The waterfall frog, also called the torrent frog, lives near fast moving streams and waterfalls in the rainforests of northern northeastern Australia. Once it was almost common but once common, it has almost disappeared in just a few years. No one is sure why this frog and many others around the world have become endangered so quickly. They may be victims of a new kind of fungus or may be especially sensitive to the effects of global warming. Colacanth, Indian Ocean, unknown number left. Sometimes called living fossils, these ancient fish were thought to have disappeared 80 million years ago. In fact, fossilized colincanths, 360 million years old, have been found. In 1938, a fisherman in the Indian Ocean caught a colincanth in his net. Since then, a few more colincanths have been caught. The largest was nearly six feet long and weighed 200 pounds. Scientists think that these fish live in caves on the ocean floor. So what are some of the things that you're learning about animals in this book that remind you of living things we read about in Meadowlands? Some of you may not have read Meadowlands yet. That means you'll be reading it tomorrow. Iremoti cat, Japan. Fewer than 100 left. The wild, this wild cat lives on only one small Japanese island. It is about two feet long with legs and a tail that are short compared to its body. The Iremote cat, Iremote, Iremote cat, hunts at night and feeds on small mammals reptiles, birds, and fish. It has lost much of its habitat to human activity and faces competition from feral cats, pets that have gone wild. Abington Island tortoise, the Galapag Galapagos Islands, one left. This tortoise, nicknamed Lonesome George, is the rarest animal in the world. He is probably the last living member of his species. Abington Galapagos tortoises are big enough to ride on. The males can be four feet long and weigh 500 pounds. The tortoises were overhunted in the 1800s by sailors who caught them by the thousands and took them on board their ships for food. Northern right well, Atlantic Ocean, fewer than 350 left. Before they were hunted nearly to extinction in the 1800s, there were as many as 50,000 of these huge mammals living in the North Atlantic. This well was given its name by whalers who, finding it easy to capture the full of, and full of valuable oil and blubber, called it the right well to catch. The northern right well has been protected from whalers since 1935, but its habit of floating on the surface of the ocean makes it the frequent victim of ships' propellers. So the animals we've read about so far are almost gone. This section is going to tell us about animals that are gone forever or extinct. Gone forever. These animals are extinct. There is little or no chance that they will be seen again. Because of the web of connections among living things is so complex, we don't understand all the consequences of a species becoming extinct. We do know that 
something unique has been lost and can never be replaced. Moa, New Zealand, extinct around 1600. The largest of these flightless birds stood uh, over six feet tall at the shoulder and weighed 600 pounds. When a big moa held its head high, it measured 12 or 13 feet tall. For millions of years, these forest dwellers had never seen a human, so they had no natural fear of the first people who arrived on their island home. Within a hundred years of their first encounter with humans, they had been hunted to extinction. Stellar's Sea Cow, the Bering Straits between Alaska and Russia, extinct in 1768. The sea cow was huge, 25 feet long and 80,000 8, 8, pounds. It swam in the cold waters of the northern Pacific. Trappers collecting seal furs hunted the stellar, cow, stellar, stellar sea cow for food. The last of the stellar sea cows died just 27 years after first being described by, a natural, by the naturalist George Steller. Tasmanian wolf, or the thylacine, Tasmania, Australia, last seen in 1936. The Tasmanian wolf, or the thylacine, was not really a wolf, it was a marsupial, and carried its young in a pouch like a kangaroo. It was named after the island where it was last seen in the wild. It was hunted to extinction by ranchers, trying to protect their sheep. For years after the last known Tasmanian wolf died, there were reports of a few animals still living in the wild, but no one has ever found one. Guam Flying Fox. Guam, the Mariana Islands, last seen in 1974. Little is known about these animals. The Guam flying fox was a kind of bat named for its pointed face and large ears. It fed at night on flowers and fruit. It is suspected that this bat and many other animals on Guam were killed off by an invasive species, the brown tree snake, which was introduced to the island home in the 1940s. There is little hope that any Guam flying foxes survive today. On these last few pages, Steve Jenkins is going to give us information about some animals that are coming back from near extinction. Coming back. Not all endangered animals necessarily become extinct. Some animals that were almost gone have been able to recover or at least begin increasing number, increasing in number. People have acted to protect their habitats, reduce the threat of hunting or collecting and breed the animals in captivity to be released back into the wild. It's hard work, but for these animals and all living things on earth, it has paid off. The gharial or Indian crocodile, Northern India, the gharial, also known as the Indian crocodile, can measure up to 20 feet long, making it one of the largest crocodiles. The gharial's long, thin snout is filled with sharp teeth used for catching fish. Some people believe that the nose of this crocodile has medicinal properties. It has been protected from hunters since the 1970s when there were only a hundred left. Today there are several thousand gharials living in the wild. Whooping crane. Right here. The whooping crane is the largest North American bird. It stands nearly five feet tall with wings that can measure eight feet from tip to tip. Whooping cranes are migratory birds. They travel each fall from their nesting grounds in central Canada to their wintering grounds on the Gulf Coast of the United States, and then back to Canada each spring. This is a long, dangerous journey. By the 1940s, there were only 22 whooping cranes left in the world. Breeding and protection programs have increased that number to more than 300 today. 
Albine Ibex, Europe. Once common throughout the mountains of Central Europe, there were probably fewer than 50 of these mountain goats left in 1900. Alpine Ibex were killed for their horns or in the belief that part of their bodies could cure certain diseases. In the 1950s, several zoos began breeding the Alpine Ibex and returning them to the wild. Today, there are more than 10,000 Alpine Ibex in France, Switzerland, Italy, and other European countries. Now here is a map of the world, and it has all of the different animals that we talked about numbered, and it shows the, their place in the world. All right. Wow, that's a lot of information to take in, and that's a lot to think about, too. I can't wait to hear what you have to say um, in our discussion questions. All right, I'll see you soon.